Welcome to Networking Field Day. The presentation that you are about to watch from Barefoot Networks is being attended by a group of invited networking delegates who represent the community by asking questions, offering opinions, and discussing the technology that you are about to see. If you would like to see more information about this event, please go to our website, techfieldday.com, and check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash techfieldday. Okay, welcome everybody. I can see this is gonna be a lot of fun. <laughs> There's a lot of energy in the room. I really appreciate your being here. Apologize for the rain. You know, it never rains in California. <laughs> Anyway, um, so welcome to our garages, and, uh, and I'll say right up front, uh, I've got the easy job here today. I get to introduce myself, give you a bit of a genesis of the company, uh, and then introduce the following speakers. So um, I'm really looking forward to it. I understand that this is usually very interactive. I saw a little bit of your session earlier today on the web, and it certainly seems like you aren't a quiet bunch. So we appreciate that. We're here for you, and uh, again, we're really grateful to you to you know, visit us in our garage. I think you'll find, if you look around here, and I think you're gonna see some more of the garages, um, a bunch of revolutionaries turning networking upside down. So if you take nothing away from here today, that's, uh, I'd like you to get a feel for that. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more when I talk about the genesis of the company. Start off, uh, I'm Martin Izard. I'm the CEO of the company and one of the co-founders. As I go through my talk, I'll introduce some of the other co-founders, and. During the day, you'll see you know, some of the rest of the folks in the company who are big contributors and spokespeople for the company. Um, though actually, the best thing for me to do right now is to sort of go back to what is the genesis of the company. And, and it's, it's not even revisionist to say, I really believe this is true. The genesis of this company goes way back to the early 90s when I first started working on nuts and bolts for switches and routers and realized that I needed to know how these things worked from a Sorry for kicking your camera. From a top-down point of view, and, and by luck, hook or by crook, found uh, one of my co-founders, Nick McEwen, at Berkeley, and he was working on switch and, route switch and router architecture. And short, long story short, he and I have worked together on and off over the last 25 years on various pieces of technology uh, that have gone into switches and routers. And fast forward to the late 90s, actually, one of our other co-founders, Dan Lenoski and Nick McEwen, uh, competed with each other at Abrezio and Growth Networks in building some of the earliest terabit per second class switch fabrics. Uh, I'll have to go backwards again, again into the early 90s. Our CTO, Pat Bossart, and I, another co-founder, worked on DSP architectures and DSP implementations. And you'll see later on in the talks that that's germane a little bit to where we are today. Mm -hmm. uh, I spent 21 years at Texas Instruments building silicon for networking equipment, one way or another. Both the smallest things that went into faceplate optics and the biggest chips that went into big switches and routers. And, and Pat Barsard, our CTO, actually worked on the physical design of some of the biggest switch fabrics in the world. Fast forward again to 2011 when the real work in this company started. And uh, actually, it was the point at which Nick was already heavily involved in NICERA, and SDN had become, if it's the right way to describe it, as something mature. It was probably at an open flow forum where he and I sat down, and I don't know quite how it came to it, but the question popped up. And uh, I always like to say that most good companies, and certainly this one as well, arose out of a question. And the question was, why is it that networking doesn't have a programmable substrate? Why is it the last piece of, intellect, in, of, uh, of, of information technology that doesn't have a programmable substrate? And you know, some of the examples that come to mind are, I told you I worked on signal processing. It has, it's a specialized workload. It has a programmable substrate. Graphics has a programmable substrate. But in networking, the forwarding plane is fixed function. And it's controlled bottom up. So, the, the long story behind that is that the users and the constructors of network networking equipment don't get to dictate top down how these things work the way they get to dictate what their server does. So 2011, there was a joint project between Texas Instruments and Stanford, Nick McEwen and I, um, which was kicked off Pat and a few other folks involved. To answer that question is, 
why is it? And is there a fundamental reason there can't be a, a, a programmable substrate for networking? And, you know, after some preliminary investigative work at TI, um, we figured out that there is no reason. And some of the folks that come later will give you some glimpses into why there is no reason that there shouldn't be a programmable substrate for networking. Um, Fast forward another two years to 2013, we founded the company in May 2013 and uh, started off actually, and now I'll move to you know, what's the physical plant here and, and, and say we started off in this building, in fact in that room in the front there, uh, there was a, there's a single room that's behind you, uh, 400 square feet or so, and we've slowly taken over these two buildings and, and so hopefully you'll get a glimpse, I think you were in the lobby on the other side, you'll get a glimpse of, of this. And, you know, the people and the physical plant actually are very instrumental in defining the character of the company. And, and I think you'll find that in every room here, there's innovation and excitement about what we're doing to revolutionize, techno to revolutionize networking. Um, you can see the folks in the front on, uh, up in early days, the cafeteria was the front sidewalk. And uh, you're actually in that garage over there. Uh, we did get the landlord to change the... Uh, <laughs> change the old steel garage doors so we can use this more effectively as a as a as a living space and uh, you know we've progressed slowly you can probably not hear on on the the webcast but it's certainly in here you can hear that uh, there's test equipment running behind this wall there's there's servers there's switches some of these switches are in the room here with us and and so <coughs> right now fast forward four years from 2013 beginning of uh, 2017 and the dream is real. It's making a lot of noise back there. Actually, it's the fans that are making a noise back there. Um, there's a lot of wire and so on. And we hope to give you a, a, a tour later on. Um, but, you know, now we're in a position where it's been more than a year that we've had customers writing P4 code. Our Tofino chip that's running in the lab back there is what we call a P4 target. It's something that we have a community-owned uh, language called P4, which is used to define how a forwarding plane works. And we've written the tools to help you take that high-level language down onto Tofino. And, uh, and, and back there, it's running our code. But we've had for a year already customers writing code ready for this machine to arrive. And needless to say, there's a lot of pent-up demand for it. So. Um, I guess that's uh, most of what I wanted to cover. Hopefully I haven't been speaking too fast so that you can interrupt <laughs> with questions, but uh, continue if you want to. I'll move on to just give you a snapshot of a slide you'll probably see fairly often. These are the primary four benefits of a, of a programmable data plane. You know, I asked the question, why isn't there a programmable data plane for networking? And, and I told you that we found one, that there's a way of making a, a programmable platform for networking. The rest of the folks here will probably spend more time telling you a little bit about how and why you should care about it. And, and why you should care about it, these are a subset of the carebouts. There are in fact more of them that more concerned folks who are building equipment. But for end users, the things that you can do with a programmable substrate is customize how much visibility you get into what's going on in your network. You can add protocols if you really want to. We find a lot of people want to remove unused protocols. Right now, a, net, a piece of networking equipment is a large superset of what most people want to use. And we feel like if you can remove, and we find that the fact is that if you can remove protocols, you end up with a simpler, more reliable, and what's more, you get to make flexible use of the resources that in a switch are mostly I.O., memory, table lookup, and, 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 and wiring, frankly. 